What's up Yard Freakos and thanks for joining me on this video. So what if I told you there is a grass out there where you only need to mow it once every two weeks? What if I told you there's a grass out there that you only need to apply one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet per year? What if I told you that with this grass you only need to water it once every two weeks for 20 minutes in July? What if I told you this grass is softer than even Kentucky bluegrass on those feet of yours. And no, I'm not talking about Zoysia being hawked on airplane magazines. Now, before we begin, I just wanna let those who are in Australia watching this video know, I am not talking about buffalo grass down in Australia, which is actually St. Augustine here in the US. This is another type of grass that we call buffalo grass here in the United States. You may be interested in this, so stay tuned, but this is not about St. Augustine. Okay. So for those of you who've never heard of buffalo grass before, what is it? So buffalo grass is a native grass to the United States, especially in the Great Plains area. And basically this buffalo grass is a prairie grass that grows along with usually blue grama and side oats grama and a whole bunch of other uh, types of uh, prairie grasses. And in fact, it's even here in Colorado. This is right down the street from my grass. So what you're seeing here is mainly buffalo grass. You can see the female flower heads there down in the uh, stalks of the buffalo grass. But yeah, this is what it looks like out in the wild if you were to go get a wild type of variety. Okay, so let's talk about what buffalo grass is. So buffalo grass, like I said, is a native prairie grass to the United States and the Great Plains. And Native buffalo grass itself is a bluish green color as opposed to more of a dark green color. It grows stoloniferously, so it'll basically send out a stolon and it'll make another node, and then that node will get in contact with the ground, and another part, and then another thing of the plant will jump up. Uh, what buffalo grass is really good at doing, it's very drought tolerant. Um, basically this thing can almost go for years without water and go dormant and then it'll spring back up and uh, you know just take off like you know once moisture returns it is very heat tolerant if it is getting water it won't like shrivel up it won't go dormant as long as it's getting the water it can take a hundred a hundred and five even a hundred and ten degree days like a champ like almost in like almost no other grass could it is also very cold tolerant. So like for you guys in Iowa, you guys in Indiana, you guys in even uh, Minnesota and North Dakota and South Dakota, it can take very cold temperatures too in the winter and not die out. It does not need a lot of inputs. It does not need a lot of chemicals to treat fungicides or bugs because there hardly is any that it gets infected by and it hardly needs any fertilizer either. I'm talking one, maybe to two pounds of nitrogen per year once you get this stuff established. And so what people realized a long time ago when they were looking at this buffalo grass was, hey, maybe we can do something with this. Maybe we can turn this into a turf, uh, turf grass for golf courses and lawns. And that's exactly what happened what happened was the United States Golfers Association approached the University of Nebraska at Lincoln, and they basically made a partnership where the University of Nebraska at Lincoln would begin to breed, the buff breed buffalo grass to have the traits needed for golf courses. Because what uh, the USGA was realizing is they can't go all the time with using Kentucky bluegrass or even Bermuda for the golf courses. They needed something that you know would cut down on costs and inputs, basically water and fertilizer and chemicals. And the buffalo grass had all those things. It just, in its native state, wasn't good enough. And so they went to the University of Nebraska and said, what can you do with this? And so over the past 30 years, the University of Nebraska has been going through a breeding program, evaluating different strands of buffalo grass and seeing if it can tolerate traffic if it can tolerate a certain amount of shade, if it can tolerate, um, or if they can make it to grow thicker than it would in its natural state, and also make it more green than blue, like it is in its natural state. 
And so over the years, the University of Nebraska has been releasing various breeds of buffalo grass to industry. The first one that they released was called, I believe, Bowie. I believe they released Bowie, and that is a seeded variety of buffalo grass. And Bowie came out about 25 to 20 years ago. Uh, the next that they released is called Legacy and Prestige. And this um, buffalo grass is um, buffalo grass that is either propagated by plugs or even by sod. And the great thing about that is, is um, buffalo grass in its natural state, is, you know, is has two, you know, has two genders. Basically, one strand of buffalo grass will be just pure female, and the other strand will be pure male. With male buffalo grass, they will send out, people call them seed stalks, but they're not actually seed stalks. They're male, the male portion of flowers because the female portion of the flower resides in the canopy. So these males will send out these um, uh, male flowers to pollinate the uh, female part of the flower in the ground. And so with the plugs and the sod, what you can do is you can separate the male seed heads uh, by these plugs or these or this sod that's all female and so you don't even have to worry about male seed heads popping out of the canopy if you don't mow often enough which you don't even have to with buffalo grass and not to be outdone the university of california at davis came up with their own variety that they thought could work very well on the west coast in california and even in arizona and they call it theirs uc verde and so, you know, it's just been, you know, iterations over the years of trying to get this buffalo grass to solve, you know, water crises like in uh, the West uh, a couple of years ago, like California was having, to cut down on inputs so golf courses don't have to pay as much money to mow this grass as often, to uh, supply fertilizers, which are no longer necessary, or even to wa uh, um, water it even more. And so the latest variety that the University of Nebraska has released is a seeded variety called Sundancer. So Sundancer is the best of the best when it comes to buffalo grass out there these days, guys. This stuff, the University of Nebraska has done an excellent job releasing this breed and it is just outstanding when it comes to buffalo grass and how it can compete against other type of turf grasses. So for example, this buffalo grass is really green. I would say it's even now comparable to the green that you can get out of Bermuda grass lawns. This grass is, um, they, they bred it to have the nodes shorter between the stolons so you can get an even thicker establishment. This stuff can get really thick. I would say even along the lines of what you would find in um, a fescue lawn. This stuff uh, still maintains the uh, the heat the heat tolerance and the cold tolerance and the drought tolerance of normal buffalo grass, as well as what they did is they bred it to really want to green up uh, faster in the spring than normal buffalo grass would. So you can get you know your green lawn that much faster because buffalo grass any type is a warm season grass along the lines of zoysia and Bermuda. So it really, they bred it to green up faster in the spring as well as stay green longer into the fall even when you start getting into freezing temperatures. So I hope I have you guys intrigued about buffalo grass. I really believe in this type of grass and the good things that the University of Nebraska and other universities are doing to help bring this uh, grass into the market and have more honer, homeowners and golf courses take a look at it. So uh, I'm going to wrap this up today. This uh, video is getting a little bit long. This is going to be the first video in a multi-part series discussing buffalo grass further and how to install it and how I'm going to install it in my backyard. So with that said, you guys take it easy. Have a great week. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested in this stuff so you can know when I release my next video. And feel free to comment. Have a good one.